Well, I'm happy you are here tonight. And the Lord is going to bless every one of us mightily. And the Lord will use you as a channel of blessing for others as well. In Jesus' name. Are you ready for tonight? Are you ready for the showers of blessing? Ready for the great manifestation of the power of God? Let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for guiding us together. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you for the leadership, the ministers of all the churches who are cooperating together. Thank you for the unity in our midst. And thank you for your power that we see. Thank you for all your people who are here tonight. Oh Lord, I pray that tonight should be a great night for everyone in Jesus' name. Speak to every heart here tonight. Break every yoke in every life. Deliver the oppressed. Heal the sick. Touch every life. And I pray tonight you make your message to be very clear, understandable to everyone. And confirm every word with supernatural power. In Jesus' name we pray. You can see them wherever you are. Tonight we're looking at Genesis chapter 19. And we're looking at a particular verse there. It's a great, great story. That is built around this verse I'm going to read to you. Genesis chapter 19 verse 16. And while he lingered. While he lingered. The man laid hold upon his hand. And upon the hand of his wife. And upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord be merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. That part of the story I've read to you now is talking about a particular family on a particular night at a particular situation. But it's a representative, illustrative situation. What happened to them? And the situation of that day is something that is going to be repeated in many, many lives. In fact, that story was referred to by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And then when he comes to the conclusion of that story, he used a particular word. He said, remember. If you have been a Christian, you have not read that story, your Christianity is not complete. If you have been going to church, you have never had that story, you have not had enough. If you do not know this story, I'm telling you tonight, there is something missing in our lives. It says, while he lingered. You know there are people that linger. There are people that loiter. There are people that loaf. We call them loafers. They just loaf about. At an important time. At a moment that is very critical. When they should get something done immediately. They loaf. 
they loiter, they linger. At this particular time, it was the most dangerous time. It was the most difficult time. It was such a moment emissaries came from heaven to make something happen. And it was a time that nobody should be lingering or loafing. But we are told, while he lingered, the men laid hold on his hand. They grabbed him. They said, this is the most dangerous time to loiter, or to loaf, or to linger. And they drew him out by force, by violence. And they got him out of where he was. Tonight, I'm talking to you on lingering on the night of danger. Lingering, loitering, loafing on the night of danger. It, it's about Lodge and his family. Lodge was a relative, a nephew of Abraham. Something had happened that Lodge was separated from Abraham. And instead of remaining with Abraham, he decided his choice, the place he will stay. And then he pitched his tent first. It was little beach near Sodom and Gomorrah. Before we knew what was happening, it was inside Sodom and Gomorrah. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah were very sinful. They were very they were very dangerous people. They were violent people. And it's from Sodom we have the word Sodomite. Immorality was rampant and overflowing and very terrible in Sodom and Gomorrah. And heaven was having information every day. That things are going from bad to worse. Every time the cry of the oppressed and the cry of the people they rape and the cry of the people they just misuse, their cry was going to heaven. Eventually, Almighty God said, I'll go down and see. But he wanted to tell Abraham his friend. In Genesis chapter 18 verse 17. And the Lord says, shall I hide from Abraham that sin which I do? And then in verse 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of each, which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. God decided he will go and see. While God was coming from heaven for a personal inspection of the lifestyle of violence and crime in Sodom and Gomorrah, he came with two angels so that when the Almighty God has found out that Sodom and Gomorrah were as terrible, as violent, and as sinful as they were, then he will release those two angels and they will destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And then Abraham began to pray. 
He said, Oh God, as you are looking at Sodom and Gomorrah, what if you find 50 righteous people there? Will you not delay the judgment? Almighty God said, Abraham, if I find 50 righteous people there, I will spare them. I will delay the judgment. Abraham doubted whether he could have 50 righteous people there. And he said, Almighty God, what if five are missing? And you have 45 righteous. God said, I'll spare them. Oh Lord, I have about 40. God said, I'll spare them. There's a principle of the dealings of God with man. In a community, when God finds some righteous people there, even though all the other people are wicked, because of those few righteous people there, it will spare the whole community. And that's sometimes what people don't understand. You find a family, and that family is very bad and very wicked. And then one or two in that family, they give their lives to the Lord. They become righteous. Instead of understanding that family, that the righteous people who are born again, who are converted in that family, they provide an umbrella for that family for protection. They don't understand. They'll be pushing them, persecuting them, opposing them, oppressing them. Give up righteousness. Those righteous people are the umbrella of the community. Sometimes other churches don't understand. Well, you have a lot of churches. And then there are a few churches that emphasize holiness and righteousness. All the other churches will not understand. Those churches that are emphasizing righteousness and holiness. They are the umbrella for all the churches. But they don't understand. They, say, they persecute those righteous people. They oppress those righteous people. And they say, we don't want them. They only is too much. The stronger they are in holiness and righteousness, the greater the umbrella is upon the churches, upon the body of Christ. Sometimes you find in a stage that the church is becoming stronger. Righteousness. And then we have, I mean, not just deeper life, you have all the churches having a worker there, a worker there, a worker there, a worker there in the civil service. In all those offices, it's like those righteous people, they want to oppress them, persecute them. They, they will not promote them. They don't want them. They want to transfer them away from them. They don't understand that those righteous people in all those institutions and ministries and prior status, they are the umbrella for the government. Protect those righteous people. Preserve those righteous people. We need them. God said, if I see 45 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, I will delay the judgment. 
Abraham said, how about 40? Almighty God, that's all right. Lord, please, I'm talking to you. I'm pleading. What if we don't find 40? We'll find 30. Why am I always making an altar call? And I'm saying God wants to make you righteous. He wants to cleanse away your sin. He wants to save your soul. Come on here, stand up. Come to the front over here. I want to see your face here. Why am I so eager that I want to see? I even want to count. I want to say one, two, three, four, five, six. How many are they? Because God is looking for the righteous people. And it is when you give your life to the Lord. And you come out of the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. And you say, I will not be a part of their immorality. I will not be a part of their crime. And then the grace of God comes to your life. And the things they do, you will not do them. All they are drinking. All they are smoking. All this night club dancing. All this uh, kind of immoral life of sodomy. When you single out yourself. And then you say, I declare for Jesus. I declare for the Savior. He is my Christ. He is my Lord. You know that decision you have taken. That salvation you have got. That righteousness that comes to your life.